I love that song. It's uh, it's it's in the the old hymn books. Uh, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin, and uh, I like to change that word "bring" sometimes to "bust them in." Bust them in from the fields of sin. The bus ministry is the greatest tool that you can have to bring in large numbers of people into the house of God, where they can get rooted in, grow spiritually, and then go out and do the same thing over and over and over again. You look at uh, many of the not just these. Uh, these fly by night churches, these, uh, these churches like, and I'll say like elevation and churches like that, that are, that are growing in numbers, but they're, uh, there's really no meat on the bone there. Uh, but if you look at churches that have been around, that are mega churches that have been around for, for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, those churches have an active bus ministry. And that's the reason why their church is growing and continuously growing. Uh, automatically, I think of uh, the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana. You know, um, they went from when Dr. Jack Hiles was uh, the pastor running 10,000 in Sunday school to now I think they run like 20 or 25,000 in Sunday school. And that's really a direct result from the bus ministry. And uh, so we've got to be willing to go out and bring them in. So the who of the bus ministry is everybody that's been born again. The what of the bus ministry, we go out and we bring them in. The where, we just read verses 21, 22, and 23. It mentions the streets and lanes of the city. That's going out into the city limits and going out uh, and visiting uh, every person inside the city limits of where you live. I remember when I was a kid, uh, this is how I got reason why I got saved and got in church and got in, and started coming to church because of the bus ministry was because my pastor at the time, uh, Wayne Reese at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Kings Mountain, when he was pastoring there at that time, many years ago, back in the late eighties and early nineties, it purposed in his heart when the church first got started, that he was going to go knock on every single door inside the city limits of Kings Mountain where we live. And he did. He knocked on every single door. Well, it just so happened that our house was one of those doors. And because of that, uh, I started going to church on the bus route, and my brother did too. And it wasn't long after that, my family got in church, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa. And uh, and through all that, my family, my grandparents especially, been in church ever since then. And uh, it's had a direct, I mean, it's had a major, major impact on my life. But I think it goes all the way back uh, to when he came by uh, and knocked on our door and invited us to church. And I'm greatly indebted to him and will always be uh, indebted to him for that. Uh, and it also says the highways and the hedges. That's the countryside. So basically, what is, what is it telling us? Where are we supposed to go? Everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. We reach out as far as we possibly can. Hey, and here's the great thing. If you know other churches that have bus ministries and they're in an area that maybe is too far away for you to go, but you know somebody that's in that area that's looking for a church, pass that information along to that other Bible-believing church and so they can reach them and get them and bring them into church. Too many churches are working against each other nowadays, and I think it's time that we work together. We're on the same team. We have the same leader, and we have the same same uh, goals, I hope, and pray if we're right with God, and so we ought to work together. So, who should be in the bus ministry? Every person that's saved. The what of the bus ministry? Go out and bring them in. The where of the bus ministry? The streets and lanes of the city, the highways and the hedges, everywhere. Number four, the when. Verse 17 says, come for all things are now ready. When are we to go out? Right now. Right now. Too many people say, well, I, you know, it, it's winter time right now when I'm recording this and it, it's cold outside and I, I'll wait till warm weather and then I, then I can go out and knock on doors. If you're doing, if that's your mindset, you'll never do it. We need to make up our minds. Now is the time. You know, a lot of times we mention the people who are lost, you know, behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Well, we can look at that from a Christian's perspective. Somebody's already saved. There are people out there lost on their way to hell, and now is the time that they need to hear the gospel. Now is the time for us to go to where they are and share the gospel with them. Verse 21 says, go out quickly. Man, we need to make up our minds that we're going to do this, and we're going to do it now. The, the bus workers within our church, we need to make up our minds. We're going to do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till next month. Do that bus promotion now. Go ahead and be prepared for bus bus promotions down the road, but do things now that encourages boys and girls to come in. The Bible here in this passage of scripture says, compel them to come in. Do whatever it takes to get them to come, but we got to be willing to do it now. 
Now's the time. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised the next breath we take. I'm looking for the rapture, and the rapture could happen at any time. And Christians, we need to be involved and, and going out and bringing them in and winning the lost at, at, at any cost right now because we're running out of time. And lastly, the why, the why of the bus ministry. Look at verse 23. It says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. The why of that. Yeah, we can look at the obvious there. So the church house is full. And I, I believe that the Lord wants the church house to be full. Uh, our church, we're, we, we're, a, uh, I don't want to say we're a small church because, uh, the power of God's there. So it's a big church. Uh, but we're a small congregation and, uh, we have a small storefront building. And, uh, I'd say in our sanctuary, we could probably comfortably, comfortably seat 75 people comfortably. Uh, we've had up to almost 125 in there before, praise the Lord. And I hope to break that record and just keep growing. Uh, the Lord's blessed us. Uh, we have a, a full basement and that's where we have our children's church. And, uh, we could probably fit 75 kids down there. Uh, and we've got a, a, a building uh, that we have our teen church in. And uh, I guess we could probably put about 20 people in there. And so you're looking just the, for children's church and teen church, we could have close to 100 young people. And in the sanctuary, 75, 80 adults. And so we have plenty of room to grow. Uh, and, uh, so that's no excuse. And I believe that if we're able to run, if we have the room for 180 people, I think the Lord expects us to put 180 people in there. And, uh, that comes with work. And so the Lord wants his house full. Why? So that, uh, the purpose of church service is so that the Christian, uh, the, that Christians be edified. And it's time for us to, to, to come together and to lift the Lord up and to worship him. He deserves all glory and honor and praise that we can give to him. But I believe really what verse, uh, uh, 23 is talking about when he says that my house may be filled. I think that's talking about the kingdom of God. Seeing people get saved and become part of the church, the body of Christ. The Lord wants everybody to get saved. He's not, he doesn't, he's not uh, wanting anybody to perish, but all come to repentance. All come to know him as savior. And the best tool that we have today is the bus ministry to go out and to bring them in so they can hear the gospel and get saved and be a part of the kingdom of God. So find your place in the bus ministry, whether it's going out and knocking on doors, whether it's driving, whether it's fueling the vehicles, whether it's cleaning the vehicles, whether it's coming to the church and praying or making phone calls or, or donating food and candy and stuff to be handed out to the kids. Whatever it is, you find your place in the bus ministry and you get involved and give it your whole heart. Let's be in the bus ministry, give it all that we have, and let's let the Lord do a great and mighty work with us, in us, through us, and for others.